Well, this is going to be an interesting kit build. Lots of bits and pieces, but not many components. Uh, it's a calculator. So we have the buttons that's going to go on here. The brain, there's a bit there, a couple of batteries. The thing on the reverse side. But what we do have is a nice LCD display with a couple of chips on the behind it. So somehow we've got to mount that. Um, main IC is just there, it comes with a holder which is I'm quite pleased about. Buttons there and bits and pieces to go with the buttons. Uh, we've also got this which is the um, what the buttons are. You'll see that's got colourings on them, yellow, green, blue etc. Because you can also use this calculator to work out the value of resistors. Doesn't help me very much because I'm colour blind, I always get the colours mixed up. But we're going to build it anyway. At the end we've got this case to put it in as well. We've also got some instructions here and in this instructions we have a link to some online instructions as well. But I'll add a link on down below for you to click onto that. Um, so let's get started. So let's have a quick look at the components. Let's see what we've got. Not many. Um, so we've got some resistors that, uh, oh, got a 10 on there, that's going to be handy. Uh, nothing written on that one. Is that a 1 or is that a dash? That could be a 1. A couple of diodes, these are the holders for the batteries. This is going to be for the um, LCD to go on. So I don't need to have a look at that. We've got three transistors and a capacitor. So um, we should be able to work out where the resistors go by the values on the board here. Luckily, the IC uh, comes with an IC holder, which I'm pleased about. So a quick look at the legs. Actually, the legs look okay, which again makes a change. They're usually bent or damaged somehow, so that's good. Let's put them back in there to keep them safe. Right, so I've mounted the um, circuit board onto the vice here, um, and we can see we've got 10k, 10k, and 10k. So they will be the three resistors that are marked with a 10. Uh, we've got a 1k down there, so that'll be the one marked with a 1, and then we've got 330 up there. Uh, I've also got another 1k there, so we should be fairly easy uh, to work out where the resistors go as they're marked. Three transistors there, the numbers are different, so we have to be careful with that, and the two diodes go there. So let's get started and we'll do the 10Ks first because they're nicely marked up for us. Of course it doesn't matter which way around these go. Got some new solder that I'm trying out, so let's see how it goes. Well, that solder flows quite nicely actually. It's 0.5 mil, so it's quite small. 
um, and yes that's that's melting quite nicely and filling those holes and not too much going on the bowl on the board as well because it's quite thin so it's quite good that I like that Okay, so that's got them two done. Uh, so now the one's marked with a one. So we can assume that these are one Ks. Let's get those on next. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, so it's just the one that's 1k by the looks things. Um, okay, let's keep that just to one side in case. Okay, and we've got a 330 up there. So let's get that one of those in there. Okay, so let's got those done. Right, next thing we're going to do are the two diodes that go down here. Now, if we have a look at the two diodes, uh, there is a, a black line on the side here, if you can see that. And that black line lines up with a sticker line on the circuit board here. So that will make sure that we know which way around they go. So the black line goes to the thick line on the board. There's one. Oops. And there's two. So let's get them soldered in place. we go it's got that done it's going to change the clippers because the other ones are a bit blunt that's better okay so that's got those in so the next thing we need to do is oh i'll tell you what let's do that single capacitor while we're here there's only one of those doesn't matter which way around this goes let's pop that one in
Okay. Okay, so that's got the diodes, resistors, capacitor in. So the next thing we look at is these transistors. So we've got three transistors and the first one is a 7550. Uh, looking at that underneath uh, a USB microscope. So the next one then. Right, that's at 8550. And the last one is a 9013. Now, uh, looking at the circuit board, Okay, so the 9013 goes on the left, the 8550 in the middle, and the 7550 on the right. Right, so let's get these in then. So, you just have to pull the legs out slightly apart. And also, don't forget that they have a flat and a rounded side, and that matches up with the picture that's on the circuit board as well. So in this case, the flat goes to the front. So that's the first one. And second one. And then finally the third one. Okay, so all we need to do is just double check and make sure they've got them in the right place and then we can solder them in. There we go, that's got them done. So let's just clip the legs off. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is uh, get the IC holder on and the two battery clips. Now for the IC holder, we have a cutout and a cutout on the board, so they just match up. So just making sure that the pins aren't bent, and we should, hopefully, yep, drop that straight in there without any problems. So all I'm going to do is just solder one leg at the moment. Okay, so that's that one in place. So I'm just going to push with my thumb on the underside, reheat that solder, and we just push it up against the board to make sure that it's flat. And we're just going to do one on the other side. And then we're just going to do the same thing. Just going to push against the IC holder, warm that solder up, and then just push against it to make sure it's flat. So that's a quick look. Yep, that looks pretty good. And now we can solder all the legs up.
Right, so the next uh, thing we need to do is a battery holder. Now we need to feed quite a lot of solder into here, so I'm going to swap over to uh, a thicker solder because we need to add quite a lot of solder onto this board to hold this in place. There we go, that's that one done. Let's do the other side. Okay. Do the same on this side as well. Again, we're going to flow quite a lot of solder into here. Great. Okay, so that's the battery holders done. And while the uh, board is this way around, we've also got to fit this connection here, which is this one here. So it's got the short pins and the long black on it. Doesn't matter which way around it goes. Uh, but what we're going to do is just the same as what we did with the chip holder, is we're going to just have a bit of solder on one of the pins. help if you can see that one too there we go and what we're going to do now is just push against it and just warm that solder up again then again I did actually feel it move then yep and now it's a lot closer to the ball so now we can solder those legs up as well Okay, so that's got that on now. So we're just going to just double check all our connections, make sure that everything's soldered up right. Nothing's missed or anything, which is good. That's okay. So um, that's all the main components done. Uh, we've got a power to go up here as well, which you can look at that later on. Um, so I think the next thing we need to do is the switches. Now the switches are all going to be the same, so I'm not going to record each and every one because um, you'll just get bored of me soldering them. But this is the, the uh, switch, um, and I don't think there's any particular way around it goes. Uh, I'm going to notice there's some writing on the back, so I'm going to do it with the right and the right right way around, um, and we just simply just push the switch onto the board like that and then we sold the legs on the other side it's as simple as that so I'll do those and I'll come back to you in a minute Right, so that's got all the buttons done uh, on the flip side. Just double check, make sure the soldering is okay, um, and make sure you've got all the um, legs done because you can get a bit bit of an eye strain trying to make sure you've got all those done. So just double check everything on there. Also, just double check to make sure all your buttons are, are flat. Um, so that's really all the components done. Um, the only other thing I've done is just added a little. 
uh, jumper there so we can have some powering rather than putting batteries in. Uh, I'll have a look to see if I've got some batteries but I'm not too sure if I have or not. So the next thing we need to do is the buttons themselves. So for the buttons we need our paper, we need these blue parts and we need the clear parts. So well, let's get our scissors out. Put that away to one side and let's just cut these up. Right, so let's try and get these in some sort of order. So there's the one that's not been chopped up. So we go, just put it in this sort of order so we can make sure that we get them in right. Okay, so that's got those in the right order. So what we need is one of these clear ones, one of these blue ones, and what we simply do, we just see if we can get pick them one up. We just hold it in place and then snap the cover over the top if it will hold. Let's just see if we can get that in properly. There we go. So that's in there and push it on, and there it is in place. We'll just do one more for you. Okay, so let's just push the paper in place. Get the backing of it, push that in, and there we go, that's that done. You probably heard it click then, so that one didn't click but it's in place, that one clicked it's in place. So I'll continue doing those and come back to you in a minute. So the final thing that we've got to do is put on the IC, <clears throat> the main brain of it. Uh, and as usual, there's a little cutout just at this end. And that matches out with the cutout at that end. So we need to turn this round. 
and then we need to just double check and make sure that legs are going to go in now as you can see those legs are going to miss so we just need to very gently just bend those those legs in a bit so it's going to put very gradual but even pressure on that side and on that side okay it's got a couple of slightly bent legs there okay Okay, so they're still quite a way out. And what I'm just doing is that gently just roll in the IC just to bend those legs slightly. I'm <laughs> still quite a way out. Just to get me get my with the fine glass in so quick look at this. We're still quite a way out. Just a, a very small amount now, very small. Right, I'm going to try to that, see if it will go in. No, it's not going in, so I don't want to force it. So let's just try a little bit more. Okay, so that's the IC in. I'm just going to again check it with my uh, microscope just to magnifying glass I mean just to double check to make sure those pins are in they're not bent yep they look okay of course we won't actually know until we switch it on so the next thing we need to look at is the main display so for the main display what we have to do is to put these long pins on it um, so that has to be uh, on the other side so they'll have to go on like that and then in a moment we'll just bend them into place so what I'm going to do I'm just going to rest the board and the pins like that and then I'm going to solder them mm. A little bit of movement in that. I just want to see if I can find something just to hold that in place. Right, I think that's going to do it. Okay. Um, yep. So let's get uh, let's get some solder on that. Right, okay, so I'm just double checking to make sure that's flat against the board, which it is. Okay, so we should be able to solder the rest of the pins up.
next thing we've got to do is to mount this onto the circuit board. Now we're not just going to plug it straight in. What we're going to have to do is to bend these pins so um, the display sits at an angle like that. So this is going to be a bit of a trial and error. So again, I'm just going to put it on the uh, board and just gently pressure the pins so they bend. I'm not entirely sure quite what sort of angle they're going to be, so I'm going to guess it about that. Let's have a quick look at that, see how that fits. Well, that's not too bad, I don't think. That, that looks okay, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go with that. And we're going to push all those pins into place. I hope you can see that all right. Right, so that's all those pins pushed into place. They don't go in that far. Um, and they just sit just above the transistors, just there. So hopefully that should be okay. Um, I tell you what, we can test continuity on that uh, by using the multimeter. So I've got it on continuity test. And if I twist them together, you get a noise. So what you can do is to put one on one side of the board, or there, one on the other side. Okay, and we've got a connection through. So, oops. Come on, stay on. <laughs> it's a bit difficult, this. There we go. Okay, so we know we've got a continuity through there. Okay. Right, now we've got it together. The uh, last thing we need to do is to actually test it to make sure it works all right. So I'm not going to use the batteries at the moment. I'm just going to use the connection on the back here. So I need a couple of cables. Uh, now which way around is it? Okay, so the positive is on the outside. Can I get these in? Sorry, not on shot. Do that again. Right, that's better. So, right, just got them two in. Um, switch on the power supply. Um, so it's two batteries, uh, three volts each, so that's six volts. So let's turn that up to six. Okay, get the leads. Okay, just put something in the middle of there so they don't cross over. There we go. Uh, right, uh, okay, so let's take a bit of light away so you can see what's going on. And uh, we have a display, which is good. Uh, although, if you look, I've just noticed, annoyingly, it looks like we've got a damaged LCD here, because those there aren't showing very well. Let's just see what happens when we try something. Uh, okay, so one, two, three times five equals... Yeah, the digit there isn't showing very well, is it? Um, 10 times 10. Yeah, we've got a line not working there. Uh, and it's on both the top and the bottom row. So something's not quite right there. Let's just try the mode button. So that's for the resistors. Yeah, again on that where it says hex. On that X, so there's a damage to the LCD there, but uh, it looks like it is working. 
So five times six, oh no, sorry. Five times six equals 30. You can see by that three. So it's calculating right, it's, it's actually working. Um, but there's a line in it there, which is a bit awkward, a bit odd. But um, I think that's actually working all right. So as long as you can read what that says. If you think it's not that, you think it's one of the connections, put a note in the comments and I'll come back to it later. But to me, that actually looks like damage on the LCD screen itself. Um, which is a bit of a shame. I was hoping that might uh, that'd be all right, but no, we've got damage on it. Uh, apart from that, though, everything else uh, is working okay. You have to excuse some of my um, putting the labels in. I didn't quite get a couple of them right, uh, and they're quite difficult to get out once you've got them in place. So um, just a, a bit of advisory there. Just be careful when you're putting the labels in. Um, so next thing we've got to do then, uh, let's just switch this off. Just disconnecting the power cables. Uh, okay, so the next thing we've got to do um, is to build the case. Uh, the case is here. Uh, got some screws there. Uh, got some more here. Uh, so let's take this to pieces and um, let's see what we can do with that. <laughs> 